7, we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, the chair notes there's a quorum, so flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, additions, revisions to the agenda. I am going to add um, 4.5 to the consent agenda, approval, release of previously budgeted funds for the Conant School District. If there's no objections to adding that. No objections. Any additions or revisions to the agenda? Okay. Um, 3.0 correspondence and public comment. Individuals wishing to address the county court may do so at this time and at other times throughout the meetings. Speakers are asked to raise your hand to be recognized by the chair, give name and address, and limit comments to three minutes. Any public comments? Okay. Um, we will go on to correspondence. I just wanted to note um, for the record, so it's a lengthy, um, uh, email, so I won't read it uh, fully, but this is from Les Ruark regarding the Gillen County Road Committee that we just voted um, last meeting to form. Um, and the gist of which is just really asking us to make sure that the expectation is that the road committee will be following uh, public meetings, records, um, public records, uh, requests that we would have to go through, making sure that interested persons are um, provided notice of the meetings and the, and the meeting materials that are being sent out to the committee members. Um, let me see if there's anything else in here that, that captured most of it less, you think? Yes, it, it did. Pretty well? I okay. think the bottom line is, I, I'm just hoping that the committee will do its best to adhere to chapter 192. So, and I, I mean, I think that was, was my expectation, so. Yeah. Well, I would like to point out that the resolution and the formation of the committee is such that under 192, that things such as um, recording of minutes and things don't need to be done. Um, it, certainly the email list is appropriate under 192 for, for that request, but um, that, uh, there are some, some, this letter could be taken as a request to do things above and beyond that which is required by 192. And um, so, for what that's worth, uh, we aren't necessarily required to, to go and above and beyond. As far as taking minutes, um, establishing that there's a quorum, um, and uh, publishing, um, publishing uh, certain materials so I mean it's just it's 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 set up to be a recommendation of the individuals that comprise the body not a um, not set up to actually make for a recommendation to the court through a quorum and consensus process it's more of a public input and 192 definitely has less formal requirements for such a committee okay Judge for may I add just a quick comment to that? <coughs> for the record, Mr. Larkin, I'm not seeking necessarily that the road committee ends up putting forth minutes, but I'm definitely saying that there needs to be an instant person's list for people to know about the meetings. And if there are materials that are specifically prepared for that group's work as, as a group, then those need to be made accessible too. But to speak, so one other thing that concerns me a little bit here, that the way that the resolution is, is, was worded, is that under the statute, as I've always understood it, when a committee such as this, no matter whether it be collectively or informally garnered, when they make the recommendations to the governing body, that triggers 192, to, to the full extent of 192. So I know I can really appreciate what you and what Ruben are trying to do. They walk that fine line of being able to receive the input of those involved that they'd like to 
to learn from and use. But at the same time, in doing that, they have to be careful that they do, that they have to recognize that they do constitute a, a governing body as that's looked at, or making recommendations to a governing body as that's looked at under 192. So I'm really hoping that going forward here, that Dewey's work recognizes that. Thank you. Okay, um, 4.0 consent agenda. So Judge, um, I'm gonna ask that we move 4.4, the waste management litter agreement out of the consent agenda. I think uh, Ruben has uh, some questions that need to be cleared up. Do you? Mm -hmm. I need to move that. Um, <clears throat> yes, actually, let's go ahead and move that. Uh, okay. I don't have a lot to bring to the court's attention, but uh, I can briefly touch on that. I will stick that under um, new business under S6.7. And I guess more appropriately, Sandy's right, it's not ready to be approved at this point. Okay. Okay. Um, I move we approve the consent agenda with that um, amendment. Okay. Second. Okay, it's been uh, moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda, which would include consider approval of February 6th work session minutes, consider approval of February 6th regular meeting minutes, consider appointment of alternate to the CREA board, Commissioner Wilkins, and approve release of previously budgeted funds for the Common School District. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Here. Okay. Um, 5.1 Frontier Talent at Update. This is just my normal um, keeping everybody informed about what's happened in Frontier Talent at Land since the last time we spoke. Um, we had a meeting last. Friday? <laughs> it's all blurring together now. So we had a meeting on Friday. Um, I was in Salem, so participated over the phone. But um, the big takeaways were that the board uh, voted to accept Wheeler County's loan, which was, as a reminder, $100,000, um, 2.5% interest, and paid back over four years. So that was... Um, accepted by two of the three board members. I will say that I was the no vote on that. Um, and again, my objection to it was based primarily on there still is no plan that the board has put forward or that our consultants have put forward in how those funds would be repaid. So I didn't feel comfortable saying that yes, we'll pay back a loan that we really didn't have a, a plan at this point identified for how we would so um, because of the Sherman County and the Wheeler County's uh, loans, um, they're going, Frontier Talent is going to have to go through a supplemental budget process. So um, I believe notice went out in this week's paper for that. Um, so that will be coming up probably at the next meeting, I think. Um, I have not seen that budget. I will just be clear uh, that that information wasn't provided to us. And I voted no on it. Um, because I, I didn't feel like we had the information that we needed to. So did they do a supplemental budget on the Sherman County's 100000 or They did them together. But what's coming up then? What supplemental budget is next? So the vote was to notice it, correct, and that the actual budget itself, the he I don't know if the technical how they go through that process, but it'll in essence be coming back before us, I think, next week. Okay. Is that your understanding, Should. folks? There are several people who were on the room, but I thought they, they went ahead and approved. There's a hearing. They, they uh, uh, approved moving forward with the sup supplemental budget process, which includes a hearing, so which be will be held on February 26th at Morrill. Which one is it required? Because they said it was under 10%. Under 10%. I thought they approved to go forward with just 
they approved the supplemental budget because they said it was under 10 percent in the way they went. So I'm kind of surprised they're bringing it back up again. But so be it. So um, those were the big <coughs> sort of takeaways. Um, we'll meet again next Tuesday in Sherman County. Um, I think that's it on Frontier Telenet side. I know so far. Judge Farrar, mm -hmm. may I ask a question to back up just a little bit on the supplemental budget sure. aspect of it? Um, I was one of those on the phone listening, and I guess my question would be maybe Max got a better feeling for this, but how can can the governing body simply advance the procedure involved by noticing a, a hearing for something that they haven't put forth? That is a good question, and one I think might be better directed to the chair of the Frontier Telenet Board. <laughs> Not to put you off, but to, to be honest, I don't, I don't know what the answer is to that. I... I did not receive the documentation that I felt was needed to make that decision, and that's why it was a no vote on it. So, um, do you, if I may, um, do, do you anticipate the court, this court, um, taking any specific action? I, I noticed there's another item on telecom hiring a, a telecom. Do you, do you anticipate taking any action from this, today's meeting, to the next meeting of the telemet board? I mean, I, we, I think, have been pretty clear of an <coughs> offer for, to uh, bringing the finances in-house. I'm anticipating, um, hopefully what I can put together tomorrow, if I have the time to do it, is just kind of a rough outline of what that would look like. It wouldn't be something that the courts approved because we've already approved that offer, um, but just kind of putting it on paper. Um, and then we have made it clear that we would be open to helping support funding for a turnaround consultant if Frontier Telenet approves going forward with that search process. So I think we basically said we're here to support, but Frontier Telenet really, I think, is in the driver's seat in terms of accepting our offer of, and until they do, I don't know that there's much more that we can do, at least at this point right now. Um, so I'm, I'm not anticipating we'll take action. The telecom attorney will get to a little bit later, but there's multiple reasons why I think we might need to look at a telecom attorney besides just for a telling it, so. Last meeting, um, something was mentioned about the, the bookkeeper resigning. Has there been any, is any update on that? She was at the last meeting. Um, I have not heard any updates on whether she intends to follow through with that resignation or if she has reconsidered that. Um, it didn't, we didn't actually discuss it during this meeting that we had on Friday um, so but that was technically a, a special meeting so it wasn't as free ranging to be able to add those kinds of questions I'm anticipating as part of the budget discussion on Tuesday that that will obviously be one of the questions that I'm intending to get some clarity on so. any other questions or things on Frontier Telenet we just keep muddling through. It's a challenge. So, okay, let's move on to um, 5.2, discuss 2006 Willow Creek IGA for reimbursement to county by port for county improvements and advances. That is a mouthful. Um, so, where last we left off was that we were going to schedule a joint meeting with the port board that has been confirmed, correct, for March 27th? Yes. No, um, I don't know if I'll be available. Okay. okay. I sent Sandy an email, but um, yeah, I don't. I just don't know yet. Okay. Are you thinking you would like us to go forward and have the initial discussion, or do you want to? No, I think I. It, I mean, if it's been said, if it's been set between us and the port, and everybody has agreed on the date, then I guess we just press on 
okay. and hopefully I can make it. Um, I'm also in the process of identifying um, our alternate counsel for this, to advise us on this, for our discussion with Ruben you know, two meetings ago, I think. Um, so I'm hoping I'll have a name, a name for you guys when I come back, uh, in, when we come back in early March. Um, and then this is just just the process question, again, because we, we touched on it a little bit, and I just want to make sure we're still on the same page, that we don't want to do like a pre-meeting. Is there interest of the court a meeting and making sure that we're on the same page about our feelings on this before we meet with the court, or do we want to just go into the meeting and each have our own views and kind of see where it shakes out? That is what we decided. That's kind of what we decided before, isn't it? Originally, we decided we'd just go into the meeting, but I just want to clarify and make sure that that's still what people are feeling. I think it'll be okay. 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 That's fine by me. So is there anything in particular that you guys want prior to that? So just to give you an idea, <laughs> this is what I found so far. I, I think I have everything I need. On the documentation. Yeah, I'm going to need some uh, further information to uh, clarify some of the, what's happened since this agreement was signed and all the other debacle that happened okay. and where, if there's um, documentation for some of the things I've been told verbally and um, just a few other questions. We've, I mean, the previous court received some lengthy emails on the topic. I wonder if that, if you forwarded that information to her, that might be okay. enough, possibly. Because I mean, you did a pretty good summary of what had happened before. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know that. I haven't received any of that so, information. So maybe if court members <coughs> have specific questions, they can circle back yeah, with Sandy and identify what there's. Send them to me or get them to me somehow. Okay. Maybe. That would make it easier for me to. Well, our meeting is until the 27th of March, which is a month away, and I'll be up for just to work before then. So we'll, we can sit down together. Okay. Judge, uh -huh. um, may I approach the court and ask a question? Sure. I appreciate your flexibility, and I, I'm not trying to be up here all the time. I um, I have two concerns that come to mind in your discussion of meeting with the court jointly. First off, it has to do with the hiring of the attorney since he has excused himself from the matter. And let's say that attorney, if being the good attorney he probably is going to want to be, isn't going to want to walk into that meeting as the court's looking at without having an opportunity to sit and talk about it with his clients first. So I'm Throwing that out is maybe something you may want to take into account here in terms of the scheduling. Um, and secondly, in terms of um, going forth from there, if there is a, a pre-meeting, if you want to call it that, I would talk at probably a, a meeting that's going to have to occur in executive session, or at least the attorney is going to suggest that you do that. And I think bottom line here that you need to keep in mind going forward is how you can keep this as open as possible, um, and particularly to accommodate interests such as myself who are going to want to know what what's being, you know, at least what the outcome of is of that. Um, I think overall, as I tried to encourage the court to do here and, and the court commission, there's a whole number of issues that need to be looked at jointly going forth. Now, I think I threw it out in, I'll tell you this, asking, I'm getting myself a little confused about <laughs> doing it, but I think I suggested it in one of my recent um, letters and communications to the court that perhaps you need to look at, at creating that liaison assignment as you do for other entities that you represent the county at and that there needs to be the same from the court. In other words, a representative from the court that has the assignment of, of 
communicating and, and being the liaison for this body with the Port of Arlington Commission and vice versa. I think that would be really useful and I'd also like to take this opportunity to throw out the possibility that that might even apply to it. Uh, and, and there should be the same relationship between the court and the Soil and Water Conservation District Board. I think the time has come for us to realize that there's more of a global approach here amongst all of these bodies than perhaps there, has, that there needs to be more of that going forward than there has been in the past. So I, I guess bottom line here, please keep in mind the importance of communicating as openly and transparently as you possibly can when you have these two these joint meetings. And I, I guess your, the, your council's going to probably have um, quite a bit to, to want to say about that. One last request or ask here in this regard. I, I would like to learn as early as possible whom the, the court not only chooses uh, uh, from those that it has solicited an interest to, to be the attorney involved here, but I'd like to learn who the three quotes essentially, who the other two were uh, at the earliest opportunity. So, thank you. Uh, 5.3, discuss the batch plant. So the, the court board was going to meet on the 12th of February, but their meeting was canceled to weather, so they're not meeting again until March. Um, and so there were several questions which are in your briefing um, that Peter got back to me that the court board I think could probably use some clarity from us on as they're making a decision about whether what their interest level is um, and then they're just behind that were some additional things that Sandy put together some things for us to consider um, different options for the land additional equipment stuff like that so I thought I would just start maybe with the ports questions and see how we're feeling about some of these issues so number one are we considering granting the land as well? I don't know. So. Okay. Yeah, that was a one and a four. <laughs> a one and a four. This one says no. Um, okay, so if not, how does the court envision the port leasing out the plant? My thought just when I initially was reading through this was could we not do a, you know, some long-term lease with the port for the, for the acre or whatever that the plant sits on. It doesn't have to be anything that was, you know, it could be very reasonable um, expense-wise, but just a long-term lease for that patch of ground. And not necessarily have to have leases with whoever might they might be using it, but just have a lease with the port. Yeah, because if the port owns, uh, gives it to them and they own the batch plant, then they would be the entity that would be yes. leasing the property. I thought so. That was my first thought. I'm open to that. Um, yeah, so that would prevent, because the next question is, would the court have one lease contract with the tenant, and then the tenant in the enter into a lease contract with the court? The answer would no. be no. no. The, the contract would be with the port. Yes. yes. The, co the, the land lease would go with the piece of equipment. Or did we expect the plant to be relocated? Well, I'd like to see it relocated, but they don't have a place to put it. That's my understanding. So I don't care where it's at. If, I mean, I don't know that there's that we have another use for that acre or two right now. And it's a good location for the windmill projects that we know are happening and going Central. to happen over the next year or two. Central. Does that provide clarity for you, Peter? It Sorry. helps. Okay. A lot. Is there anything else that you have questions about that you think your board might have questions about? I mean, those were really the big things, and then you know the other the other utility that the court has is water. water. You know, and the plant does use a little bit of water, not a lot, but a little. And um, uh, I think well, they I think that site has a porta pot is how they use the sewer. <coughs> So there's not a sewer component, but there is a water component. And then I would assume that the tenant would, um, like, you know, 
hook into the Columbia Basin's power for their utility on the left. So, you know, just I appreciate you going through the mechanics with us. We got to figure this out and make it as seamless as possible for a, a tenant if we're going to do it. And then, um, and you've also made it clear that you weren't interested in helping to uh, grant any funds to fix the plant up because we understand it's in pretty disrepair or it needs a lot of help. Or we have to, you know, that be a client's responsibility. So, um, just trying to figure out, you know, the board would need to know all those answers and, um, to be able to make the decision whether it's right for, for the board. Ruben, if we entered into a land lease, um, couldn't we make water part of that lease is like a minimum of gallon each per whatever and then anything to exceed that they would have to yes you could that. include that yes mm -hmm. and figure out the same level of water right. and that. Um, I think it probably the best thing to do would be the is there a meter on the electric so it would have to be probably <coughs> Thank you. There's a meter on the electric, right? Right, just not on the water, right? Yeah, so it's, it would be metered through Columbia. We need to meter the, the, the water needs to be metered. That's problem. Well, that's all something that can be figured out in yes. drafting the lease. Um, I'm thinking that we do a separate lease from the get the plant. Right. And, uh, so it's just the, the, just land. the property. So that raises uh, a question about the current leasee and what, how we want to manage the current contract that we have with Thompson Brothers and sublease to Head River Sand and Gravel. It should be just about up if it isn't already and next week now in a month to month. I have a question about that. If we continue on a lease, because this will take some time to mm -hmm. figure out what, the port, what, what they want to do and what we're going to do. In the meantime, we are have we have a lease. So if the equipment goes bad while we have a existing lease with Thompson Brothers, mm -hmm. um, do we have any obligation to fix the stuff, or do we just say, oh, sorry, it went bad? And that's going to depend on the precise wording in terms of the lease. Um, when we originally leased it to Thompson Brothers, we weren't sure about the condition of the equipment, and so I drafted it. Don't don't uh, go word for word on this because it was a few months ago that I drafted it, but I put in something to the effect of Thompson Brothers has inspected and they accept it as is condition and if it breaks down tomorrow then it breaks down tomorrow. Um, and also the lease is based mainly off of not a monthly or a set dollar amount but how much they produce. So with this lease it was drafted with that in mind and there's the, the liabilities there in minimize. So does the lease automatically convert into a month to month or do we need to take action to convert it into a month to month? So the way it converts now is to a year long lease. There's, it's not a month to month, it says convert to a, another year. So we would have to change that. So we would need to give them notice then that regarding that renewal that we're not exercising that renewal. So I'll have to take a look at the lease and see what we need to do there. Because I'm, I mean, I'm thinking that we would just do a month to month basis until we figure out the port's interest. And if the port's not interested, then we have to reevaluate right. how long we want to hold on to it or if we want to surplus it, that kind of, right. those questions. Mm -hmm. that option. Rather than being locked in for a year, right? I, mean, I would suggest that if the client wants to re up for another year with the lease, to let them do it, just to keep them there, and you know we can work out our our deal when 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 that ends. You know if they were to vacate the premise, but if you have a, a client a bird in hand, let's keep feeding them. You know let's let's keep the plant if up we and go going with, and keep the jobs renewal, in the county. If we go with the renewal of an for a year, mm -hmm. um, can we? How do we get out of it if we need to? Is it difficult? It would be. Uh, I'd have to.
take a look at the wording of the lease, but my thought is, is given what, what Peter is saying here, is that what we perhaps could do is um, keep the lease with Thompson, but still give the plant to Ward. Um, and uh, basically assign the ownership of it and the lessor, the landlord interest, from us to the port. Um, if that's the way that you wanted to go, if you want to keep the, the lease active and have us as the county getting out of it, that would be doable. Um, basically what I'm saying is you don't have to break a lease to continue the situation necessarily. It's not that it's absolutely required to do that. Current lease. She is. Hello. Hi. <laughs> We're just talking about a batch plant, Chris. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what I'm wondering is can we assign it? I mean, is the language in the current, and a lot of times contracts mm -hmm. like that are not assignable. Um, so, I'll have to take a look at the lease. Um, typically, I don't, since I drafted it for us, I don't see that I would put in something that says we can't assign it. Um, it may have to be through the permission of the uh, of Thompson. Um, but uh, yeah, it all depends on the language of lease. I mean, it's, it's doable at law. It just depends on what the exact language is. Like I said, it's been a few months since I've looked at that. So. I'd like to see a copy of the lease, too. I don't believe I have a copy of this. Unless it's in one of yeah, these folders she passed on to me today. I didn't look, but I'm not sure. Uh, so, okay, so what is the, what what are we deciding? What's the direction that we're giving to council on the lease with Thompson Brothers? I'm okay with going with a, a with um, going with another year if we can continue working with the board in the meantime and if we decide to do something else that ends up being okay and if the equipment goes bad we're not going to be on the yeah, as long as we're not they leased it as is so i because it could die anytime <laughs> it could die today and, and it is part of the lease that they have to keep it in running order mm -hmm. yeah so as long as it's assignable i guess yeah. yeah. It should be. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, do we need a motion for that, or is that sufficient? No, um, I just put a note in my planner to pull up the lease uh, tomorrow morning. I'll take a look at it and see what we need to do. And then we'll, who will be contacting Thompson? Will you contact Thompson, or do you, should Cherry be contacting Thompson? Um, Since it's a mm -hmm. industrial park. Mm -hmm. Let me take, it the le take a look at the lease and get a game plan here, and then okay. we'll go from there. That's okay. all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you want to circle back, I'll I'll delegate that. Okay. The it's, contact will be. It can be to Sherry since that's her her so area. Lately, you've been really good at that. I've been. I. But what did I say? I'm, I'm here, here to help. You. You're here to help. Okay. So let's just do. Um, I'm thinking we'll do 5.4, and then if there's no objections, I think since Judge Pat knows. Is around for us um, that we might move the IGA up to six to that first under new business. Okay. So um, consider approval of grant program updates. So do we need to discuss or can we just make a motion? Um, unless you have anything to discuss no. on our what no. we worked on this I morning? I don't think so. I mean I feel pretty good. I I would like to bring back the special projects just because we did it so quickly to make sure that we're we're all, all okay with this since it was right before lunch but with the well, other two the operation and the i'm still feel good about this yes yeah, yeah. okay, okay i'll try to word this quickly i move we accept the guild county operational support grant um, what are you looking for I think probably something I moved that staff moves forward with implementing the um, 
three of the uh, grant programs as discussed in the work session. Okay. I move. <laughs> I move we um, move forward with the um, operational support and strategic event. Oh no, we changed that to capital investment yes. grant formats as discussed in the work session today. I'll second that. Okay, hold on, I'm trying to capture this. Okay, so let me make sure I got this. So it's been moved and seconded that we move forward with the operational support and capital investment grants um, guidelines that were uh, that we worked on during the work session today. Is that clear enough? Mary, you got that? <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Should have had motion language for that one. Yeah. I wasn't quite ready for that. Okay. So um, I'm going to. Hi. Are you there, Chris? I, yeah, I am. And I can hear you. Uh, I think, does that microphone, is it on? It's not on. When you turn around, I think I picked up the Banshee's microphone. I can hear you well then, but not very much. Is this better? Any better. I can hear you now. Awesome. Okay, okay good. So, so we'll go ahead and move the discuss amendment to Justice Court IGA with City of Condon um, up to, we'll, we'll take that first and go a little bit out of order. Okay. Ruben, do you sure, I'll want to give us off. an overview of this? Yeah. Yes, okay. Well, uh, so the um, Justice Court, by statute, can um, enter into an agreement with the city to handle all the cases, uh, such as city code cases and uh, things that occur that the city desires to prosecute. There is currently an intergovernmental agreement between the Justice Court and, um, and the City of Condon to do exactly that. Um, what the City of Condon is asking to do is to amend that um, and do a new IGA that will um, provide that for nuisance actions that the city um, is able to retain some of the, the costs and the fines that the court imposes. And this is uh, to offset the, the costs that the city would have in bringing those actions based on nuisance. Um, I've done nuisance actions they were um, and uh, they, they certainly, it, it, it's not a bad thing uh, that, they're, that they're requesting that the court do this, um, but for, um, a few things that I have uh, regarding the language of this agreement that I think the court ought to take a look at. Um, the first concern is Section 2B. Um, uh, where it says the county shall bear all expenses associated with uh, the exercise by its justice of the peace court of the powers, functions, and duties of the city's municipal court. I know it's unlikely, but I, I think that needs to be clarified that we're we're covering the court expenses, not overall expenses for the entire case. We're not the court's not going to cover the city expenses um, and attorneys' fees, and the way that's written, it it could be read broadly enough to encompass that. So that's a concern. Um, section three. Um, just ought to be something where it's terminable by a party giving notice on a certain amount of time. This just says that it will continue hereafter until this agreement is terminated by written notice. Let's just put in 30 or 60 days there so that there's no question as to what's reasonable. That one's pretty easy. Well, the other thing I had uh, on that one is that it's, uh, it's not reciprocal. So the city, mm -hmm. the county, doesn't have a way to terminate it. So just ask if we could make that so 
either party could terminate. On 30 days or 60 days so that we're not arguing about when it can be terminated and things like that. Yeah. So revisions to Section 3 are, are important. Um, Section 5, um, I did review the city's nuisance ordinance and Section 5 is, is okay regarding the split except for 5.2 which says all costs incurred by the city through the summary abatement process um, go to the city only. So they get 100% of the summary abatement. Um, we at least need to establish that that's a summary abatement that doesn't go through the court or something like that because you can still do a summary abatement process and then go to the court to establish um, whether there's additional fines, liens, costs, things like that. So if the court's involved, we, we ought to have a split going on and not everything going to the city. Um, so those are my big concerns. I think there's an overall concern as to whether you want to entertain this or not. That is your prerogative. Um, and then if you do want to entertain this, then it's, it's those three big things that need to be clarified. So I think let's go to Chris, to Judge Patnick for a second, and then Catherine. Um, Judge Patnick, did you have any thoughts on, or any perspective you wanted to share on the cost sharing, any concerns okay. that you have? Uh, First of all, I'm bound by the um, Code of Judicial Conduct, and I need to um, not be extremely involved in the um, fine splits and the language in the law that I'm later going to be applying. Um, generally, though, I have no objection to way, the way this is written. Okay. If our legal counsel wants things refined, I have no objection to that either. Okay, Catherine, did you so add some stuff? I'm a little surprised at the conversation because it went to Wyatt that everything was okay. And so the city council approved it last week, two weeks ago. So that there needs to be some other changes, that's fine. Um, I can send it back to Wyatt, but the email I got was that you had okayed it, Wyatt had okayed it, and we're done. So if the county court wants to go back and look at it again, that's fine. But if this time I could find out if it's really okay, so I don't take it back to my council again and it's not okay, I, I would appreciate that. it. Thank you. And I don't know. I, mean, I haven't. This is the first time it's gone up to you as a, as a body. So I, I have an know. email. From whom? Wyatt, from you. It's from you to Wyatt to me. And it says that I approved that, this? That you said that it was okay as far as you were going forward and this was, you had talked to Judge Patton. Um, so, uh, so that would be going forward to present to the public body, not going forward as in it's okay, it's uh, all good to go. Well, I disagree, but we can do, if we need to fix it, we can fix it. Okay. Well, and it also needs to have the right date and uh, Steve Schaefer's no longer the judge. <laughs> that needs to be corrected as well. So, I mean, I, I have no objections to sharing these. I think it's reasonable for the city to want to be able to recoup some of that. It does cost money to pursue these cases. So, any objections to to that? So, so what I'm wondering is if we don't have what are we thinking that would need to be refined, or 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 is the court comfortable with the way that it's written? Well, it looks like there's three three main things that we're looking at. Yeah, the three things would be the um, what are all the expenses, termination, and um, the uh, all costs for summary abatement. issue with the summary abatement? Mm -hmm. Five two. All costs incurred by the city. Isn't that just basically saying that 
the cost that the city has is for the benefit of the city only? My understanding is that's the cost of the abatement. So when we go in, we get our money back for abating the property, yeah. even mowing, moving things. But it needs to be clarified. Would the county have any costs under 5.2? Not that I know. I don't, because we're not abating. No. Is, is that abatement is not necessarily a penalty under the recent chapter but an additional remedy so I, because there's a summary abatement doesn't mean that there wouldn't necessarily be some additional cleanup work to do by the court in assessing um, uh, liens or fines or what I just think you would not clarify that that just because there's a summary abatement procedure that it doesn't mean that uh, that if there's additional fines and such, that it's, it wouldn't be according to the 64 split. Well, if we if we clarify that section, if we add 30 to 60 days on this, and then if we go ahead and clarify section 2.B, you think this this why going to have any issues with just a little bit more clarification? Make the changes, and I'll send it to Wyatt. That's what you can do. Unless we're okay with the way it is. Know much I don't know enough I can't remember enough about the abatement process and to defer to defer to our council. Yeah. It's concerns. Okay, so what's the direction? Are you we're either looking for direction for council to adjust the contract or we're looking for a motion to approve the contract as presented. And just for clarification, if you're not comfortable with it, that's fine. That's that's fine. Yeah. I don't really think the process was that great, but you guys have to be comfortable with what it, it says also. So I would say make the changes and get it back to me. And this isn't an extremely time sensitive thing. That well, there's some insurance issues that we need to get cleared up. We should have had cleared up two months ago and three months ago. So I would like to have it back. Originally ready to go on March 6th so we can reapprove it, rescind the last one and reapprove this contract. Okay. So let's um and let's do that then. Let's let's um why don't we make the correction make the corrections on particularly I'm to be honest, I'm not concerned that much about the cost, the the summary abatement cost. It sounds the way that I'm reading this, it looks like, in essence, the city just wants to make sure that they are being covered for the costs that they expend for abating. And, I mean, we're not abating, no. correct? And doesn't, wouldn't Chris's, wouldn't Judge Patnode's costs be covered up above? That's what I want to clarify talks about a summary abatement process and an abatement order that would imply that an order has come from the court. Um, I think as long as we're making some changes, let's we can tighten that up. I understand what you're saying though. I mean, it's in some ways I think that uh, by clarifying section 2B, what are the expenses associated? Maybe that will pass to carry over. Okay, so, and then the effective date term, if you can make that reciprocal so that either can get out and, and do a 30 or 60, whichever, I don't have a preference between the two. I don't have a preference as long as it's stated what it is, okay. so that there isn't an argument. So then let's plan on that coming back, and if it's, if you guys, if you work this out with Wyatt, I think we'll just put it on the consent agenda for the next, since we've discussed it pretty thoroughly and yeah. pass it. Yes. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. That'll work for you, Catherine? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Thanks, Chris. Thank you very much. Sorry I wasn't able to chime in more. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back up to the top of new business. 6.1, discuss University of Oregon 2019-2020 Community Dispute Resolution Program Grant Funds. Um, so, in the time since I put together my briefing, things have changed just a little bit. But in essence, um, the University of Oregon Law School uh, administers dispute resolution program grants that come from the legislature. And our whopping grand total for those two years, they are estimating, will be around $1,000. Is she going to hang up? I don't know. I'm, I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we received a letter from the University of Oregon asking if we would like to administer those grants or if we would like the University of Oregon to administer those grants. So, um, the question that was in your packet was basically, do we want to take it or do, do we want to give it to U of O? And my recommendation at the time was, let's give it to U of O, because it's it's $1,000. It requires us to have all kinds of hoops that we jump through, and it's just probably not worth this no time. In the meanwhile, after I wrote this, though, Wasco County reached out to us. And apparently, the history of this is that Wasco County has administered this for multiple counties. So they are asking if we are interested in doing that, and if so, then there is a joint resolution that was in your packets that we could approve if we wanted Wasco County um, to do it. So the question before us is, do we want to do it? Do we want U of O to do it? Or would we like Wasco County to do it? And then, Wasco County, why not? Let them do it. I, I mean, don't want to do it. That's, want to that's do what, it, what has been done in the past. Go for it. So if, um, and it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's a very short resolution. So we would just need a motion to approve the joint resolution for designating a community dispute resolution coordinator. Which, you know what, I'll make a motion. I'll make a, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the joint resolution with Gillum, Hood River, Sherman, Wasco, and Wheeler counties in the matter of designating a community dispute resolution coordinator. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we appoint, or appoint, approve the joint resolution uh, between Gillum, Hood River, Sherman, Wasco, and Wheeler counties uh, in the matter of designating a community dispute resolution coordinator. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any others? Motion carries. Who seconded that? I'm sorry. Okay. Sherry did. Okay. Judge, oh. mm -hmm. may I ask a question about this before you? Sure. Maybe Sandy would know right away, but as I as I recall, there was a, a spreading of the assessment involved in that. Am I correct in, in thinking there might be a an obligation on a county's part as a part of? No, it, it's a grant from University of Oregon. There's, there's no but county there's funds. There's no administrative fee involved for administering the grant that the Bosco County is applying. No. Okay. Thank you. The, the, the funding will go to Wasco County through the grant, yeah. and, and they can disperse it as needed. And that's contingent on the legislature reauthorizing it. So yeah. it depends on if they approve it or not. Thank you. Okay, uh, 6.2, consider approval of Gillen County, do we want to take these three together? Transportation. We so, can, unless there's a specific question on any of them. So we've got three, um, it's the Gillen County Transportation, uh, what number is that? Title of six, title of six, policy plan, I'm like, hmm. Resolution 2019-02 to adopt transit asset management plan and performance measures and Gillen County Transportation Advisory Committee bylaws. This one came in after I left, so I don't know if you want to do a quick review from. Yeah, so these are basically um, 
operational documents that the transportation department has to have in order to maintain their uh, grants. And so yeah, the, the policy plan and the advisory committee bylaws, the, the advisory committee bylaws, that's the um, new STIF committee that was uh, just approved a couple months ago. Uh, otherwise, it's to keep the state grants. Are there any questions about those? I mean, I read through them. They're pretty straightforward. In the recommendation from the... They've been recommended to us to approve them by a public transportation advisory board. No, I didn't have any questions. It's all pretty straightforward. Okay. Can I do one big motion or one three separate? I mean, I think we're probably okay with all three, I think. Sure, I'm doing one. Okay, I'll try. Go for it. <laughs> Read it now. <laughs> Talk slow. Oh, gosh. I move we approve the Guild County Transportation Title Six Policy Plan. Uh, adopt resolution 2019-02, adopting the transit asset management plan and performance measures, and approving the Gillum County Transportation Advisory Committee bylaws. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the Gillum County Transportation Title VI Policy Plan. Adopt resolution 2019-02 to adopt transit asset management plan and performance measures and approve the Gillum County Transportation Advisory Committee bylaws. Is there further discussion? Are all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. And this is not anything substantive, but just before it's signed and goes to the chair of the GCPTAC, Dave Klein, um, the signature lines didn't come out as signature lines, they came out as Along across oh, the okay. lines, so just yeah. non substantive, just something. Fix the format. Too, but we'll, we'll let those go sure. <laughs> okay, we are almost wrapping up here. Um, discuss hiring a telecom attorney 6.3. Um, so I just wanted to raise this as. Um, as a, a potential issue is that we have got the middle mile, mile fiber line is nearing completion and as well as some of the ongoing challenges that we've got with Frontier Telenet, I'm wondering if we may need to go ahead and move forward with finding counsel that specializes in telecom stuff. Um, particularly if we're thinking that we want to sign long-term leases for the middle mile line, things like that. Those are pretty technical yep. and usually require a telecom attorney to at least review them. So I think it would, my recommendation if, if we were going forward with this is obviously to bring back names, but I just wanted some feedback on whether this is worthwhile and if you want me to go ahead and just start the search for a telecom attorney. Okay. Especially with what you're telling me. I will do that. Okay, 6.4, Hannah Batlin, Gillum County, uh, Gillum East John Day Watershed Report. Hi, Lana. Hey, thank you. I have a few more documents. Coordinator for the Gillum East John Day Watershed Council. I work here in Condon. Um, so I'm here because the Gillum County Court is the legal governing body of the Watershed Council. Um, so you guys approved, or not you guys, but 
the court approved the establishment of the Gillum East John Day Watershed Council um, to receive continuity. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, basically, it's required of me to present to you guys to receive further funding from um, the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board. So it's just an update. Great for you all. Um, the Gillum East John Day Watershed Council is made up of seven local representatives, five from the main watersheds within the county, um, Rock Creek, Hay Creek, Scott Canyon, Ferry Canyon, 30 Mile Canyon. And the other two members are at large members who have natural resource and agricultural knowledge and interest. Um, I'm the sole employee of the Watershed Council and I frequently partner with the Gillum Soil and Water Conservation District and the SWC also acts as my fiscal sponsor. Um, so I'm just gonna explain some of the projects that the Watershed Council has been working on over the past two years. Um, the first is place-based integrated water resource planning. Um, the Watershed Council is a signing member and active participant. Place-based planning is a project of the Lower John Day Working Group in, and in 2016, on behalf of the Lower John Day Working Group that Gillum SWCD applied for and was awarded a grant from Oregon Water Resources Department. Um, so we've been carrying out this project. So the goal of place-based planning is to understand the water conditions in the Lower John Day Basin, identify issues and concerns, and then to develop solutions to meet current and future water needs. Um, so the Gillum East John Day Watershed Council acts as the outreach lead for the outreach committee. Um, and so over the last year, the, as the outreach lead, the Watershed Council has planned and conducted five public outreach meetings and events as well as created materials for the press and for the public in order to educate and engage those within the Lower John Day Basin. Um, also, as an, like an extension of Place-based planning is the learning partnership. So there's four, or there's three other pilots going through this process. And so through funded by the Ford family, the Watershed Council has been participating in, like we, we meet up and discuss the whole process and talk about the issues or trials and tribulations that we've, and like what we've learned through the planning process. Um, so the next project, uh, is the Lower John Day RCPP Stakeholder Engagement Grant. Um, last year, the Watershed Council received funding from the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board um, through a stakeholder engagement grant to engage landowners within the Hay Creek, Scott Canyon, Ferry Canyon, and 30 Mile Creek watersheds. The Gillum SWCD is planning on applying for an RCPP, which is a Regional Conservation Partnership Program through the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Um, RCPP is a cost share program for installing conservation practices on private lands. So through this stakeholder engagement grant, the Watershed Council hopes to identify the resource concerns of the landowners and managers within the three watersheds. Um, we conducted our initial meeting January 24th, uh, wherein we informed the landowners in attendance of the potential funding opportunity and asked them to discuss with us their resource concerns. Uh, there were 20 land owners and managers in attendance and all of them chose to participate. Um, so being able to show high landowner willingness to participate in the program um, that we've already and that we've already identified resource concerns, um, it'll be helpful when we go to apply for this RCPP funding and it'll increase our likelihood of receiving these funds. So that's why there's this stakeholder engagement grant. So let me just yeah. real quick. Yeah, sorry. Because <laughs> I'm always wondering when, because these are sometimes kind of broad, like conservation practices. What would, what does that look like? Yeah. Like what what kind of things are landowners signing up to to yep. do? Yeah. Um, for example, uh, like juniper treatment or um, weed treatment, um, spring developments. Uh, we're working on a new kind of thing is beaver dam analogs. And so uh, it's kind of like man-made beaver dams that are supposed to stop or slow down the flow of water and have it expand into the floodplain and save water. So everything generally relates back to fish health too. So I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, so some examples. Yeah. yeah, I was just curious. What um, yeah. 
Um, and actually, that flyer or brochure I gave you has a good list um, inside of it of ways to mitigate conservation okay. practices. Yeah. Um, and that gives a good overview, too, of the whole program. <laughs> That's what we had. I mailed those to the landowners within those watersheds, and then it was kind of an invitation to come to this initial meeting, so they all received that brochure. Cool. Yeah. Um, no, okay. go ahead. Oh, sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. okay. Um, so we grants the Watershed Council is kind of the main, that's kind of one of their things. Uh, so this grant was written in 2016, I believe, and it's just completed. Um, the Scott Canyon Hay Creek Fire Restoration. Um, so in 2016, the Scott Canyon Fire burnt approximately 33,596 acres of ground in Dillon County. Um, the goal of this project was to contain and eliminate further spread of noxious weeds following the event of a burn. Um, so after the control of the weeds took place, the distribution of desirable, desirable grasses was conducted to prevent further encroachment, um, to increase habitat, and to decrease erosion and sedimentation. Um, and then 30 Mile Creek and Ferry Canyon weed grants uh, were submitted last year, and those have just been wrapped up also. Um, so these two grants were conducted at the same time last spring uh, with a total of 21 participating landowners. Uh, they both were involved in the chemical aerial treatment uh, of noxious weeds as well as biological treatment, which is putting bugs on to weeds and the bugs kill the weeds. Um, the targeted species were Himalayan blackberry, Russian knapweed, diffused knapweed, Dalmatian, Dalmatian toad flax, and poison hemlock. The treatment was also followed up by uh, application of seed of desirable grasses. Can I ask a question? How much do you work with our county weed department? Uh, the, pretty closely with all of those. Um, they, in the Hay Creek Scott Canyon one, uh, it was the weed department who applied the chemical treatment. And then we worked with them on the 30 mile and 30 canyon one also. They kind of, with the in between with contracting the uh, helicopter pilot for the flight. And then I think they also, the weed department, um, ordered the chemical as well and gave the chemical recommendation. So like while I was writing the grant, I was in quite a bit of contact with Don Farr um, as far as, you know, uh, chemical recommendations and like what weeds needed to be um, addressed. Do we have much blackberry problem? Uh, Fairy Canyon is substantial. It's, I think it's like uh, 55 acres of blackberry along the creek. Um, and it's pretty much contained to that area. It's, it's kind of scattered throughout the county, but that seems to be where it's the worst. And I forgot to mention, we also conducted, or attempted to conduct a burn on, a, nobody really knows like how to treat it, it seems like, but it <laughs> seems problem. like burning it and then spraying it, and then spraying it again, I think was what we were trying to do. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Um, but that seems to be where it's mostly contained to this very canyon, right along the creek. Um, yeah. The Lone Rock Ridge Juniper Burn was just completed this fall. Um, this was an 8,588-acre juniper burn in Lone Rock. Um, this project was done in partnership with four landowners, the Gillum SWCD, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board and the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs. Um, this was done to improve water quality and quantity in Lone Rock Creek and its tributaries, as well as to re reduce fuel load for the residents of Lone Rock. Um, another project of the Watershed Council is a small grant program. Um, this is an easy to engage in competitive grant program that awards up to $15,000 in restoration projects. Um, this program responds to a need for local decision making about watershed restoration opportunities on a shorter time frame than is usually available in the larger OWIP's larger grant program. Um, so this program enables landowners to improve their properties for the benefit of water quality, quantity, fish, and wildlife. 
from planting native plants along stream sides to reducing sedimentation and erosion from upland farms and ranches. Um, so that's everything I've been working on. Uh, so and then our future plans. Uh, Oregon, well, the, one of the main focuses or purposes of the Watershed Council is to provide outreach and education. Um, but our primary funder, Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board, no longer allows you to use their funding for um, youth outreach. Um, so that's one of my next projects is to be looking for further funding so that we can have a greater presence within the schools in Gillen County. Yeah, thank you so much, you guys. Any more questions? questions for Hannah? Is your, um, you're kind of a one staff of one? Yes. Is it full time? Yes. You're around? You're around. And where's your office? It's uh, the new Ag Service Building on Main Street. Okay. Um, yeah, so with we share an office with the S, or I share an office with the SWCD and the NRCS, and then in another office within the building is the Farm Service Agency. Yeah, We're going to tour. Yeah, you guys are going to tour. Scared in April, is that right? Yeah. I think so. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Before you run off your, uh, your new board. Or yeah, what do you guys need to do for that? Um, I need to ask one question. Okay. Do you, you do not compensate your board members, correct? No. Okay. Okay. So I don't have a complex, so I can go into that. <laughs> um, so I think we would need a motion to approve the watershed. We approve the membership, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. So there's. I move to approve the current membership of the Gillum East John Day. Watershed Council as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the current membership of the Gillum East John Day Watershed Council as presented. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you. You're all approved. All Yay. set. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to 6.6, .6, discuss, discuss purchase of new ballot machine. This is not in your packet, because this kind of came in while I was gone, um, but in essence, our county clerk is in need of the shoes, a new ballot machine. Yes, she is. And so, um, I think what we're looking for today is just consensus from the court that we would like her to bring back three quotes for us to look at. Um, the idea I think we've discussed with Nathan and with Ellen is doing this um, out of discretionary funds because we would like to have the ballot machine in place before the May um, election, if possible. So I was mostly just raising it to see <coughs> Yes, no, we would like to see those bits come back to us, and if so, then we'll task Ellen with, yes. with collecting those and bringing them back. Okay. Yes. I think her initial, she did get one in. I think it was around like 35,000, or that might have been what she paid for the last one. I think something like up that. to like 50, I yeah. think is what we're looking at. So not a huge expenditure, but pretty critical for, our, yes. for what we do here. So, okay, um, we will let Ellen know and plan on seeing when she can get those back, but maybe by the 6th, if she can get those turned around quickly enough, so. Okay, okay um, 6.7, we moved the approval of service agreement with waste management for more for litter pickup work crew down there. And Ruben, you had a few concerns? Oh, just two quick things. Uh, first of all, it says that there's an exhibit A and an exhibit B, and there isn't. Um, so, Sherman oh. Court uh, clarified that there shouldn't be one. They're just named in the document. So um, the other issue is under 11 um, default. It says uh, if there's a default that waste management may elect to take over the service, use contractors, vehicles, facilities, equipment, and other property used in performance of the services, uh, the county can't sign something that says that. 
<laughs> so, um, well, why I, would they want to? Yeah, well, that's true, and I don't think that they could take over the inmates, but um, yeah, no. I don't want to get into an argument there. So, I'm going to talk to um, Chris uh, as soon as we're done with county court today and see what we can do about getting that clarified. And that okay. Yeah, and other than that, this is pretty standard. Other so than that, probably it's... just put it on consent agenda if there's no. Yeah. If you guys don't have any questions yeah. about it. So we will bring those that back for March 6th if we can. Okay. We're just flying. Down to court member reports. Leslie, you want to start us off? I don't know. I'm kind of you're first. I'd stop them besides you've been snowbound. I've been for snowbound. Two weeks. I've been snowbound for two weeks. I tried to do some stuff. I didn't have much luck. I'm trying to find my piece of paper. Maybe it wasn't ready. Sure, you want to go? I will. I she, can't find she doesn't know what she's got going on. Well, you're organizing your thoughts. Well, Leslie, Sherry, you'll take a Somewhat. Um, the Port of Arlington is having a meeting tomorrow at 2 p.m. on the Irrigation Feasibility Study Work Session. So I will be attending that just for. Um, informational purposes and I had a communication from Carmen Oaks of the Wheeler County Wolf Depredation Committee mm -hmm. and I have nothing to report other than I need to be brought up to speed on the Gillum County Wolf Depredation Committee I believe it was formed in 2012 and I don't have any information and Sandy wasn't able to find anything either of what's been done. So I need to apparently, uh, was Mike Weimer, was he the, he was, he was the previous. I, I need to call Mike and, um, and it may be the case to have to speed on what was happening with that. My understanding is that all of the counties created those with the idea that even if they're not meeting regularly, that there may at some point be grants associated with and things like that. So. It may be that there's not much to, to find out. To find out, yeah. Well, Wheeler County um, completed their 2019 Wolf Block grant, and they requested funds for a two-day Wolf Livestock Producers Seminar to be held November of 2019 in fossil and they were asking if we wanted to participate so I guess my question then would be to the committee if they find that to be of value or not they were asking us to I think she was meaning she wanted us to give some money for educational materials she didn't really say this money um, I think somewhere in there it said five to seven hundred it just says five to seven hundred. Doesn't right. say anything about dollars. It doesn't. I, I, but that could be people. I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> First, I thought to five to seven hundred people. <laughs> yeah, the people might I don't think so. So, so anyway, yeah, uh, and then maybe some additional costs for advertising. That, but so let me get some more information and, and um, see what I can find out. Come back to us. Get back. Okay. Anything else? No, oh, I think that's it. Leslie? Okay, I can't find my piece of paper, but <laughs> I think what I wrote on there was that, you know, I did because of the weather, there was three meetings that I was planning, or, or three things that I was planning on doing, but that all got canceled. The Lower John Day Act meeting, the North Central Public Health District meeting, and also the waste management. Thank you. Oh, right. Get together at the deli that I guess has been rescheduled. Or possibly a day, I don't know if I can make it. Uh, February the 28th, 28th at 4 p.m. at the River's Edge Deli. Yes, and that's yes. a Thursday. And that's a Thursday and it begins at 4. Correct. Cocktail time only, not when you're at work. <laughs> right? Well, we're not working. Um, I had sent Sandy an email about some dates that, um, that I don't know if I can make. The 27th, we already discussed. The 13th is the... Um, I think I might have cleared that one up. Okay. That, that was for the building tour? 
Oh, I thought the 13th was for the um, goal setting. Goal, the goal setting. setting. Oh, goal setting. Yeah, yeah sorry. those yeah, people are coming. Especially mm -hmm. for summer. Yes. So, but I'm still both those days. It's just we're about to open the museum, and so things are getting a little crazy. Crazy. And so to have something every Wednesday, and also that week I also have something Tuesday. I have North Central Public Health District. The previous day, the day right before that, that will take the most of the afternoon. So I'm good, trying to work it out. Okay. I'm trying to work that out. Um, an email about, um, I have a question for you about the CCO email about if anybody was interested in that. And I wasn't sure if what you were asking about was for the Citizen Advisory Committee or the Community Advisory Council, I guess is what it's called, or if you were asking about something else. So basically what I was asking is, so those committees that you just mentioned, um, Judge Farrar is sitting on them, and so she would normally take the lead on this, but she's got some conflicts of interest um, because on the other side of, of all the CCOs, um, she has some relations in, uh, with uh, GOI. And so she was hoping that one of the other commissioners might be able to um, take that up because we have the whole CCO 2.0 thing coming up and we need to move forward with deciding you know, what, what area we're gonna be in, who we're gonna be um, contracting with and for the future. And that's all kind of this happening. So, so are you still, are you not okay to be on that? Community Advisory Council? No, or the board okay? itself is fine. So the, the issue and where the where there's a conflict is that the, the, right now the CCOs are making uh, requests of the state for which counties right. will be in their service districts. At Gobi, um, I should probably just state for the record, my conflict is that uh, the executive director of Gobi is Kevin Campbell who is going to be my father-in-law shortly. So I cannot participate in moving that through, moving the process of Gillen County weighing in on the, the selection, on the selection of the CCO mm -hmm. part. So what is so involved? I'm not entirely sure. Probably the place to step would be to um, gain some, some better Familiarity, familiarity with it. Um, was it uh, Commissioner Weimer? Was that something he was involved in? No, I believe it was Judge Schaefer. Um, but I, I know we're on some timelines that are ongoing, and we're, we're starting to run out of time. So probably, you know, maybe a call to our existing CCOs would be a, a good start. Um, and she's on vacation. Lindsay is on vacation this she, week. Okay. Kimberly, thank you. Um, um, the other person on Sher Sherman County is Commissioner McCoy has kind of been a point on Sherman County. So he might be a good, if you're looking for background information, because they will also be going through that same process. So I just, might be yeah, I just want a clarification about if, if we were talking about um, replacing you on the Community Advisory Council or something different and what's entailed in this process, how no. Not that right. the, the advisory council itself is not a big deal because once it's decided, it's not money that's flowing through. Where this is a conflict is that it's determining where the state money is going to go. And if it goes to Gobi, then that is Kevin's organization. So, But this is that is something that the whole court will decide. Right. The two of you will. Yes. I'll be conflicted out. Right, yeah. Yes. Right. But yeah, we just need somebody to sort of take the lead and I, I guess find out some of that information that we need to, to get to my word. Well, I didn't decision. respond because I wasn't sure what it entailed. So I wasn't prepared to say whether I could do it or not because I don't know. Yeah, and I, and I can provide some contact. A little more information? Stuff, yeah. yeah. I, I think both Sherry and I would probably need more information to be able to find talk to you too. Please. To be able to decide. Yes, please talk to me. <laughs> Okay, and then I had another question. Um, got an email about, and this is something that has come up in the past too for me, and I just ha haven't ever been really sure how to handle it, so I thought I would take this opportunity to ask it again. An email about, you know, from Representative Smith about cap and trade and a hearing coming up, and whether or not anybody was planning on attending that hearing, or 
if we needed to send comments. And when someone asks us to send comments, do we send comments as a court? I mean, is that something that, you know, you will, we will decide, yes, we want to comment on that, and you will do as the judge? Or do you want us out there making comments on our own? Because I didn't really feel like I could speak for the whole court. Or I don't know if I'm supposed to, you know. I mean, I would say that it's probably not a good idea to speak for the whole court if the whole court hasn't had a discussion about it and decided that that's our position. Right. You are, of course, welcome to speak up as Commissioner Weatherall if you have a personal opinion um, that you're conveying. Um, but I would say, I mean, there's some, like I'm in a draft, um, as soon as we walk out of here, actually, I'm in a draft, a response to the Department of Energy asking us if we wanted to comment from the, basically saying, thanks for allowing us to comment. We're not planning on commenting. I mean, that'll be the extent um, because we discussed it. But I think if it's like taking a position on a, and it's coming up. I think yeah. it was like March. I think it was the Friday of March. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was the first or what it was, but I thought, oh, how do we handle these? I just, I was never, I'm never really sure how. Well, and Judge Ferris' analysis is very spot on with the elected official handbooks. Yeah, usually how I approach it, it when, like, I was in Salem last week and uh, Representative Smith did ask me about cap and trade and I basically conveyed concerns that I heard from AOC that I thought he should be aware of that were nece not necessarily county positions but just here's what I'm hearing basically so I would say that it's probably within the will if you're or your will house if we're getting constituent feedback that hey this is a problem conveying that and saying you know we haven't taken a visit a position as the court but here's what I'm hearing from people on the ground is probably worthwhile to pass that along as well. Um, so. Thank you, that's helpful for me. Um, then I have one other, one other thing, it sounds like, um, um, oh, Berkeley's gonna be in Arlington on February 24th, right. did you guys see that email? Yes. Yes, that's all I, that's, I think all I know. Without my piece of paper. Okay. Um, I've got three quick things. I was in Salem last week for a meeting, AOC meetings and some meetings with our delegation. I had meetings with, um, with Representative Smith to talk about some funding. I basically took, um, the city has a house, the city of Condon has a housing project. They're interested if there's state funding that opens up. Um, and then Columbia Basin's fiber project, um, and then the port had a, a project related to their, um, to the airport that they asked me to take, basically. So I shared those with him um, and had a good conversation and we'll just probably keep in touch every month as I go back. Um, and I am sitting on AOC's legislative committee. So that is where it gets kind of a little bit tricky because we're being asked to vote to support things so what I've been trying to do is if it appears that everyone's unanimous in the room then I am voting for it and if it seems like it would be a little something that the court needs to weigh in on then I just have not been voting on it so um, for the most part everything just about everything they took up was unanimous um, AOC really doesn't operate with too much dissent I mean if, if there's mix, they don't move forward on legislation. So, um, and then we had County College for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And that was mostly on finance and budgeting. Uh -huh. And personalities, which is why <laughs> we'll have to get into that later on our, our different personalities, but that was very useful. Um, I wanted to give you guys an update too on juvenile court and how it's been going so far. Um, we went ahead, as I told you, transferred the initial caseload that um, we inherited, basically inherited when they came in. Um, since then, we have had four or five new cases in the last seven days. I mean, it's been a little crazy. Um, and those have been moved over as well because um, I mean, almost every single one of those required 24-hour hearings by state law. So they had to be in front of a judge, like, promptly. 
Um, so, but what I want to report, um, just generally, what I've been observing so far, is that the circuit court judges have been incredibly responsive to trying to meet our needs and our caseload. Um, Judge Wolf, who took on the vast majority of the initial cases, actually was willing to rearrange his schedule to come out here on a day that circuit court is normally not here to be able to see our folks in person. It ended up that DHS couldn't make that work, and so we had to, they had to move it and we had to do it over a teleconference. But so far what I'm seeing is that the judges have been very engaged with our folks. They've been on these emergency hearings that are coming up that they're just kind of having to squeeze in. We've had no problems getting those on their dockets. But they've been very, obviously, they're professional judges, so they run their courtroom appropriately. Um, so all of those things, I think, have been very positive. Um, so two things that I just want to leave for you guys is that I, I, or three things, I guess. One, I'd really encourage you guys to just check in with Amy and ask her how she's feeling about that change, how that's going. Um, and what change? The change, our, our court cases right now are being referred to circuit court. The, and it, which is a temporary it's thing. a temporary thing the mechanism behind it is I'm basically signing it comes to this court I signed a court order to move it to circuit court to their judges so they're still technically originating in this court which is why we can always if, if we decide we want to keep it here long term I just stop signing those court orders and they come to me instead but, so that's kind of the mechanism but I think it'd be helpful for you guys to have a conversation with um, Amy privately to hear how how it's going and kind of give her get her take on that um, uh, and check in with her um, the other thing too that might be useful and I'm just saying this with an eye towards if we want to make a decision or begin a decision-making process on whether to keep our current system or make some changes to it is that there are some hearings coming up with some of our families and kiddos from Gillum County. And so if you are interested, I've sat in and listened to those just to see how the interactions with the judges have gone, things like that. If you have an interest in that, um, just let Amy know and she can make those arrangements so that you can listen in and, um, and just observe how the judges run their courts and how they interact with our families and things like that. Because I know that's a concern that some folks have raised. And so I think for me, it was very beneficial to watch that myself and see how that interaction takes place and so if you guys are interested in seeing that um, we can make that happen um, and then the third piece is um, I would like to propose coming back to the court um, with kind of a schedule of how we might undertake a decision-making process so how you know if if we're going to do some public comment periods what those meetings or work sessions would look like and kind of start laying that out. Um, I, I can tell you that the workload, uh, there's a lot of new cases that came in in the last week. Um, and the mechanics of that is, it doesn't matter whether I'm in town or not, those kids and families have to be before a judge in 24 hours, which makes it a little lo logistically challenging if I'm in Salem to sign court orders. So um, that happened last week and we figured out a way to make that work but I think um, I think it would help our juvenile director if we proceeded with giving her some direction on where the department is going to end up going long term so so I just am sort of flagging that that I would like to bring that back and we can talk about it, a schedule and a process for making a decision okay. um, and then the last thing is this uh, came up Sort of tangentially, uh, when Catherine had raised the issue I think two meetings ago about consent agendas, remember we had the discussion about how to write those online. So my question is, are we are we interested in pursuing electronic packets? Would you like me to bring back numbers and don't we have something already? It has a point or something like that. We we did. It's we don't have it anymore. It was brought on, tried out for a couple months, and it's expired. Okay. So I'm just I'm curious if I mean if there's an interest for that. 
we can share what the city has been using, kind of their pricing, and bring it back for a decision on whether we want to implement that. I would like to hear more about it. Okay, okay. definitely. Okay. And I'm Kelly and I don't know about what's going on. What other counties do and how they put their zones. Yeah. We've dug into it a little bit. Good. Okay. Um, Judge, may, sure. may I throw in just a quick question or um, suggestion that maybe in looking at that, that the research you do, whether there's any possibility at all of doing it for all three of the courts uh, as Tri County, Sherman, Wheeler, and Gillum. I know that is a different ballpark there, but when you look around us, what the city of Condon is doing is being done just terrifically by some of the other adjacent counties, for instance, Boston and Morrow to some extent. And I really encourage us to do everything we can. To go. It may not be something we can do right away, but we need to be projecting ourselves out to provide for that type of dissemination. You can also add so many committees or so many boards to that packet. So we were able to do our committee meetings on that packet. And <clears throat> also down the line, if we wanted to give all of our planning commission members and um, budget committee members, we can also add those. They will be the, in the agenda packets also. So I mean, you can have, I thought they said up to seven boards in with civic clerk. And so, and I'm sure the cost goes up if you want more or less, but it is, it's great. It's worthwhile. Okay. So we will bring back some options, if that sounds good. Would it be beneficial? Would you like to I mean, maybe even look at the cities since they've got it at City Hall and maybe just even well, I've pay a visit to, to Catherine. I've been meaning to, but I have not looked at it yet. Yeah. Just to kind of see how, how it works. What I like about it is, is that instead of getting a big, long packet, you can actually go to what's on the consent agenda, press on that, and you just see that document. And I mean, granted, it's harder because it's on a smaller, it's an iPad, a computer, and you don't have it printed out. But the other option is too, is all of our packets are built also in a PDF file. So once I get them all attached to the agenda items, I can print out the whole PDF file from the meeting packet, which includes the agendas. And so it's also good for record keeping because at that point, as we all know, we have to keep our agenda packets mm -hmm. and um, you can do them front and back and they take up a lot more, less space than what you have in the past. So. I also, I also like that it gives us an easy way to share the materials online. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more accessible. And um, at least the way we set it up with the city is that it's an automatic update. So say we were to add something on his end, mm -hmm. he doesn't have to send it to Kelly and Kelly has to update it. It updates it automatically onto the website. It's integrated in. Yeah. So it saves some time on her end as well for managing updates, which may be worthwhile. So, um, okay, and now I, oh, go ahead. I thought I remembered something else sure. that I wanted to ask about. Just this, let's keep it within our two hour thing. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna make seven minutes. Sure. Sure. We do have oh, an extra seven minutes. minutes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is something that's been bothering me and I don't know if it's if it's anything that is even in our purview, the right word. I don't know. When I was talking about um, if we wanted to put any stipulations on grant funding, you know, if we wanted to add a line about that or anything. Um, the reason that question kind of came up is that I just recently heard that the um, that both school districts, our North End School District and our South End School District, are deciding to co-op or have decided to co-op with sports outside of the county. Like Arlington's maybe looking at Ione or is already doing it with Ione and, and the Condon is maybe with Sherman Wheeler County. and also with Sherman County for a different sport. And I'm just, I guess I was just bothered by that. And I don't know if, I don't know who makes those decisions and I don't know if it's just a select few or if they're actually going out to the different communities and asking them. I no. haven't seen anything. Because I would say that they're asking anyone their opinion and I don't, I don't know how that works either, but I'm not very happy about it either. In fact, it makes me very angry because there was that line drawn in the middle of our county. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and that's what I've been thinking too. It's and like, what trying to get rid of that line? 
what better way to bridge that gap and and have us be a, a county? I just don't. I guess I don't understand why we're going outside the county when I feel like we should look to our, within our county first. We need to talk. And I don't know. Maybe they're doing it. Maybe that's been done. I don't know. But like I said, I heard about it after the fact. Yeah. And I had heard a lot of parents I've talked to have talked to me, and they just are they just don't not happy. Judge for if I can, commissioners, you guys picked a, a perfect time to put out what you're talking about because I think essentially the player involved here is the OSAA, the Oregon um, Schools. Help me out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, and, and the legislature because you know there's been a huge battle down the valley over the same, essentially the same thing with forcing the. Salem go all the way to Bend, for instance, to play ball and whatnot. And I think it's just really, I guess what I'm saying is that I'll, I'll send you what I've got that, that might help you with that, but speak up. And, you know, to the two boards, Condon and Arlington, they, you guys need to be there on, on, or at least they need to hear from you on that. Right. And I would just clarify it. So uh, as far as it's what you're talking about, as far as like league schedules and, and that, he's absolutely right. But the decision on who these schools are co-oping with is through the school boards. And I can tell you from coaching and trying to bring stuff together that if you talk to the Condon School Board, they will tell you the Arlington School Board won't work with them. If you talk to the Arlington School Board, that Condon School Board won't work with us. So, that's my experience. We have our work cut out for us. Okay. I would suggest maybe reaching out to the superintendents and seeing how how they make those decisions. Because I know sometimes it, sometimes it depends on the sports and the kids that the numbers that they've got and whether they can make the numbers. So t sometimes it's just they don't have the numbers between Arlington and Condon, but they may have the numbers if they're co-oping with other. So I would just. I'm with you, but I would I would say let's make sure that we check with folks and see what their actual process is. Well, and I didn't know I just wasn't sure if any you know I, I yeah I don't know maybe everybody maybe people in Condon are fine with it and that's the way they want to go maybe people in Arlington are fine with it but I just don't know if they were asked and I don't maybe they're not fine with it because when I heard about it I really wasn't fine with it but I, I think there would be a lot of value in one countywide school district rather than two. You still keep two campuses, but one school district, and you can have a lot of cost savings. You can have a lot of programs and teachers that were shared. I got on a school board. <laughs> That's above our pay grade, folks. So, uh, and then we're we giving them the, almost a million dollars yes, a year. So. Yeah, we're giving them a whole bunch of money. Okay, announcements. Do we? We got Frontier Tonnet uh, next Tuesday. Frontier Tonnet and Frontier 911, I should say, both are in uh, Sherman County. Um, the for those who missed this morning's work session, uh, that next week's has been canceled because we were so darn effective this morning. Um, so the next work session will be on March 6th in the morning, um, which will also be our next regular court meeting. Anything else for announcements? Judge, if I could? Sure. A personal announcement. Yeah. Um, Sue Greer, please the court. I work for the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board. You heard earlier from Hannah. She's one of my grantees, but I kind of wanted to give a heads up and an invitation. The OWIB um, Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board Board of Directors will be meeting in Condon in October 2019. It's oh, OWIB's 20th birthday. And uh, the whole board and staff will be here. Um, local partners will be doing tours. We'll have a, um, a social so you could meet our board. It's a 17 member board, state, federal, and at large um, entities make up our board. And so I just wanted to get it on your calendar. I'll get dates to you specifically with the invitation from our executive director that we're real pleased. Wonderful. So yeah. It's really great. October. In October 
Okay. So just, just no real quick before we break <laughs> up, um, several times this week I was hit up by the sheriff and our fire services coordinator about the letter that they had sent. So I'd like to ask that you think about that for the next meeting. If there's a direction you want to go to that request. Oh, so taking on the how about that 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 I mean, or you can do that. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, I also think. Part of that needs to be part of the budget yeah. discussion, mm -hmm. point, frankly. It's a budget decision. Mm -hmm. And it's big. It, 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 it is, but they also so need to go through their budget process, so they would like to know a direction. Well, I would, yeah, if I were them, I think I would keep on keeping on the way they've been doing it until they hear the difference. <laughs> okay. We will add that to an upcoming agenda. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, next meeting is March 6th. We have a work session in the morning, regular meeting at 1 o'clock. Work session at 9 a.m. 9. 9. If that works for you guys. That's fine. We can do it. Okay. Uh, any other business? I used to go to work at 6. If not, I will adjourn this meeting. <laughs>